All right, let's gather all of our supplies. We're gonna need stabilizers, six of them. We will need a front and back piece for our stegosaurus. You'll want these to be twice as long as your hoop. And we have a front and back piece for our legs, front and back piece for our spikes, and a stiff piece of felt. This is my tummy applique fabric. You'll also want this to be twice as long as your hoop because your tummy will be for the whole entire stego. Extra pieces, pins, tape, scissors. I'm reaching for my big scissors here. <laughs> Hemostats. I use a chopstick for turning and polyfill. So let's push all that aside and get started on our stegosaurus. This is hoop one. We're making our feet. So the first one is gonna be on your stabilizer or on your fabric, you can do that too. You want the fabric to be pretty side up. I'm gonna tape it down because mine has been known to shift. As a side note, I'm doing the five by seven. So I'm gonna be adding this water soluble stabilizer to it. However, the six by 10 plus has applique toes. Just the four by four and five by seven have fill stitch for their toes. And you're gonna find I use a lot of water soluble stabilizer. So I'm gonna cut it to size and set it aside for other pieces that I might need it for. I do use it quite a bit on this design. We have our little toesies filled out. We're going to take the back of our leg fabric and put it pretty side down over the hoop. I'm going to pin it down. And if you turn your hoop over, you're going to be able to see. As long as it's not in those outline stitches, you will be safe with those pins. I chose the open version, so you'll see the little openings on the side. That way I can stuff it nice and firm. Let's restabilize and move on to hoop two. While that stitches, I'm gonna go ahead and tear all of the stabilizer out and cut my feet out. While hoop one is doing its start. Here I'm showing you, I have the open limb, so I'm gonna cut out a tab and hold it out of the way while I cut around my feet. This tab helps when you're stuffing and also is a good spot for closing up. If you cut it too skinny, it'll be challenging to hand sew it shut at the end. up our workstation. Here's hoop two. You have two options for hoop two. This one here is for all of your spikes to be the same color. So you're just gonna wanna put pretty side, you're gonna sandwich your fabrics basically. So you have two together, pretty sides together over your placement stitch and a firm felt piece. I got mine on Amazon. You'll want it to be firm if you want your spikes to be standing up. This is the six by 10 dyno right here that I'm showing you. And as you can see, the spikes stand up pretty nice and firm with this particular felt that I found. So you put your felt down over your fabric and then you can run step two on the spikes. While that stitches, I'm gonna go ahead and turn all my feet right side out. Remove from hoop, restabilize, and we're going to move on to hoop three. Hoop three, you're going to see there's this mostly box. <laughs> you have an open area, and that's where your excess fabric is going to go, is that open area where there's no stitches. So line up your fabric in that box with the excess fabric 
where there's no stitches. While that has step two going, I'm gonna trim out these spikes. I cut around them, I turn them all right side out, I iron them, and now they're ready for adding to the hoop when it gets to that time. I wanted to show you here, there's two smaller pieces and they go on the outside. So there's four, all one size and two small pieces. Here's step two. It tacked down markers and an outline. So there's a deeper marker there and two little dots on the outside. Those are just markers for lining things up. Step three is your applique for your tummy. You'll want, again, you'll want this to be twice as long because it's gonna go on the next hoop. So make sure you line it up so that the excess of the fabric is with the excess of your main stegosaurus fabric off of the hoop. Let's run the tack down. And you'll see there's a zigzag on the bottom and a straight stitch along the top. Now here is, this is important as well. You'll want to just cut straight down on the end since this is going to go on the next hooping and cut around the rest of that applique for your satin stitch to go. You see how I just cut it straight right where it finished tack down. The next step is your foot placement stitch. Make sure that your feet are facing the way that you want them to go. You don't want backwards feet. So the head's on that side, the tail over here. So I want my feet facing forward. I'm gonna go ahead and run the tack down stitch. There we go. So we're gonna trim the excess fabric. And the next stitch is going to be just a little zigzag stitch. It's gonna hold it, your foot down stronger. So you'll wanna use a little bit of water soluble stabilizer because your foot is a little bit bulky and that'll help it not catch on your hoop needle. And you'll also want this thread to match your applique satin stitch, which will be the next one after this. So see, I have it blue for that little zigzag. And the next step is the satin stitch and I want it to match that thread. Ah, oh, it's so smooth and pretty. Okay, you can safely remove this hooping and restabilize for the next one. Hoop four. I went ahead and ironed my hoop three, and I'm just gonna cut off the excess stabilizer fabric. Don't cut your foot, <laughs> but I do leave the stabilizer on. I find that it helps in lining everything up and keeping that fabric stable for lining everything up. So I do leave my stabilizer on the backing for all of this. Now, if you see on step one, there are markers on the actual stabilizer. This is for you to line up the previous hooping too. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can really see. I line up the back of it, those markers from hoop three onto hoop four. And I'm going to pin it just to really make sure it doesn't move. You do have excess fabric hanging off of the hoop and sometimes needles or the motion of moving it from off of your machine onto your machine might jar the fabric. And I don't want it to move from these specific markers. So I will be tacking it down with a push pin here. And I'll zoom out here in a second back to regular view. But I just wanted to really show you guys how I match up those markers because that's a good spot. Now this next step here is going to put little spots right on the tummy applique to make sure you're lined up perfectly so that those satin stitches come out super smooth. Okay, now you're gonna move the tummy applique out of the way for this next step. It's going to outline your box and add more markers for when you're gonna add this to your last hooping, okay? And you don't want that tummy in the way. 
You can move the tummy applique back over. There is no, no, no applique placement here. You just need to move the fabric over and it's gonna tack it down for you. There we go. So go ahead and cut the excess along the top. And my fabric likes to shift, so I tape it down. We're gonna go ahead and have our foot placement run. And there it is. And again, matching those toes, we want them to face forward. I'm gonna fix it up and we're gonna run the tack down. So this is done just like the back foot. We're gonna trim the excess. And you're gonna want this next step, this zigzag, to match your satin stitch for your applique. And I'm gonna go ahead and run all of the facial features. All of this will be found in your JPEG tutorial and your stitch map for this design. So we're just gonna run all of those. Ah, oh, so pretty. So we can go ahead and remove this off of the hoop, restabilize, get ready for the next one. Hoop number five. So once again, I ironed this and I'm just gonna cut the excess stabilizer, but I leave the main stabilizer behind the fabric. I'm gonna tape these feet out of the way. So again, we have our mostly outlined box and you want the excess fabric where the stitches are not on the stabilizer. This hoop is gonna be the other side of your face. So it outlines that and it gives you your markers. The next step is your applique for your tummy. You'll want your excess fabric with the excess fabric of the stegosaurus on the outside. Again, trim a straight line right where the tack down stops and trim away the excess fabric. And the next step is your foot. This is the exact same as before. It's just the opposite side of your stegosaurus. Put your toes down facing forward and run the tack down. Trim the excess fabric and this little zigzag stitch you'll want to match the satin stitch to your tummy. And then we're gonna have all the facial features. The difference on this hoop is we are going to have the placement stitches for the spikes to add our spikes down. I'm showing you there that the fabric matches. And there's our spikes and our face. So lay your spikes how you're gonna want them to look. Again, the smaller piece is supposed to be right on the ends of the whole stegosaurus. And then you're gonna flip them over those placement stitches and each tack down is its own step. I'm just gonna show you it complete though for speed of tutorial. Tape your foot out of the way. And now we're gonna match up your two sides of your stegosaurus. There's markers there and you can match those up. Personally, I enjoy matching the facial features up and the satin stitch to the tummy up. I find that the most accurate but the markers there help as well, just to make sure that your fabric is not at a wonky angle. I am gonna push pin this into place. And again, I just, I go really, really slow on this part, you guys. I really make sure that those lines are perfectly matched up for a smooth, wonderful stegosaurus. Another trick is making sure this tummy stitch is matching up well. 
and that's it for this hoop. There is a stopping star so that your hoop does not recenter. But you do not have to run that. You just remove from hoop and stabilize for our final hooping. Yay, we're almost there. Hoop six, this is it. <laughs> I ironed it, my, all my pieces that are now together and I'm gonna trim away the excess stabilizer. Here we have our final hoop and you'll see it has markers and the part box. We're going to match up hoop five to this. And again, we're just matching those markers that you have from hoop five onto hoop six. You just wanna line it up. Make sure that hoop, the other side of your stegosaurus is out of the way when you do this. And I'm sorry, I'm, I, I just have to make sure it lines up well. And I will pin this down again. Every time I pin it down, I do check the back to make sure that it is not where my outline stitch is. I just pinned myself. I said, bad needles. Fine. I will just line it up and watch it very, very slowly on my embroidery machine. <laughs> but I will be making sure that it is smooth and my markers are on point. This next step will be to make sure that the tummy applique is in the right spot. So go slow. They're small stitches, so if it does mess up, you can seam rip it and try once more. But mine came out pretty good. I did have to undo that foot. It was too big in my machine. Now make sure you flip this tummy applique fabric out of the way for this next step because it is going to outline your tail for you and give you markers. There we go. So it does the outline of your tail and it does markers on the ends for you to be able to line up your hoop, the previous stegosaurus side too. Now you can safely flip the tummy applique fabric over. There is no placement stitch for this hoop, for hoop six and hoop four, there's no placement stitch for the second half of the tummy because you already have that fabric there. Go ahead and trim the excess applique fabric away. And the next step is going to be your foot placement stitch. So let's put, I lost it, where'd it go? And there it is. <laughs> let's put our last foot down and tack down. Trim the excess fabric away. Match your thread. I'm checking all my water solubles to see if any of them are big enough. Match your thread to your tummy applique for this little zigzag stitch. Mm, sorry, I'm off screen on some of this. I didn't mean to be. I don't have a crewman. I don't have a cameraman. So I have the other three spikes placement stitches put down. And again, I'm gonna see how I want it to look, and then I'm gonna flip it over. And they're tacked down individually, not all at once. I just do it at once on the video. It's a bit too much stabilizer for me in my machine. There we go. So make sure those feet are tucked in out of the way. This is going to be your last step on this. Yay, we're almost done. So go ahead and mark, match up those markers. And one of the key things, again, for me is to match up that satin stitch on the end and the tummy outline stitch along the bottom. Those I find are very helpful to matching up these multi-hoop length stuffies. So there's our final outline. 
you can safely remove from, from your hoop and tear all the stabilizer away. And this is gonna take me a little bit of time, so I'm just going to snap and be done with it. Yay! I'm not the best at this. So make sure you leave the opening excess fabric and cut around your stegosaurus and make little notches wherever there's corners. I know you can't see it off screen. Now we can turn it right side out, get rid of all that extra tape that we were having for the feet. Oh, look, it looks so good, you guys. All right, we're almost done. Let's just put some stuffing in it. Yay! All my dinosaurs are dying. The spikes go up. I still need to do a little ladder stitch along the bottom. I got all the feet stuffed. And they actually stand. It's so exciting that they stand on their feet. I hope you guys like this tutorial and you guys make lots of stegosauruses for your children to enjoy. Thanks for watching.